podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Earlier this spring, Wake Forest University hosted the Voices of Our Time series. President Nathan Hatch led a conversation with Bloomberg News Executive Washington Editor Al Hunt and PBS NewsHour Senior Correspondent and Co-Anchor Judy Woodruff. Here's an excerpt from their discussion. Al, let me ask you about another major change in our time, and that is uh, the decline of the newspaper industry and the major shift to things digital. How, how do you understand that? Well, the, the old business model for newspapers simply, they, they don't work anymore. I don't think anyone here, if you were about to get an apartment or you were about to buy a car, you would turn to the classified ads in the Winston-Salem Journal. You would go on Craigslist or, or, or something else. And the business model simply doesn't work. To do great journalism costs money. And if, to have that kind of money, you have to have an advertising base, which just uh, has been eroded, eroding for the past two decades. It's one of the great fortunes of working for a place like Bloomberg, where we have this extraordinary terminal that does analytics, data, and news, which brings in about six and a half billion dollars a year before a single advertising dollar comes in. That's why our model works. Uh, the New York Times is trying to go behind a paywall now for some of its content. I think everybody in the news business is hoping they succeed because the New York Times remains the crown jewel uh, of any newspaper in the world, uh, and they are they're not in trouble in the sense of going under, but they're not nearly as robust as they were. I'm skeptical it is going to work, but, but maybe I'm wrong. And uh, I think um, you have seen in the last five years, once great newspapers just simply disappear or be just pale shadows of what they were, the Chicago Tribune, the Los Angeles Times, the Philadelphia uh, Inquirer, uh, those were all really, really good newspapers uh, 10 years ago, and uh, today no one would call them that. So. So it's a, I'm not pessimistic about journalism. I think we're going to invent new ways to do it. We already are doing some of the stuff on the Internet is good. I have problems because I think it, 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 there's a polarizing uh, uh, impact. I think it's great for people who, are, who, who have the time and have the skills and have the education. I think for those people who just can do it in passing, it's, it's more of a problem. But I'm not pessimistic, Nathan, about journalism, but I am about newspapers. Do you have advice for students who seek to be journalists? Yeah, again, like politics, get into it. It's great. You can do all sorts of things, whether you're working for a dinosaur or uh, you're on the cutting edge of some new technology, uh, because there is, uh, there's a lot of interesting things going on. And there are places that are really, including where I work, that are, uh, that are just extraordinarily dynamic. We began a new product in Washington, a journalistic product called BGov. It's run by a Wake Forest graduate. We believe in, in, uh, in, in, in at, least, at least collegiate nepotism at, um, at Bloomberg, uh, Mike Riley. And uh, we've gone in the course of a year, we've hired 150 journalists in less than a year, in 10 months. And uh, so there's lots of exciting things going on. And whether you, you decide you're going to make a career out of it or not, uh, it's, a, it's a great place to be if you're young. Bloomberg, is, though, is one of the few places that's hiring right now. I mean, they have ex a lot of exciting things going on there, as, as you hear Al describe. But much of the rest of the news business, it's still, I think, experiencing a, some kind of a shakeout. We don't know where it's going to end up. We know it's going to involve the Internet, digital. That's clearly going to be the name, the, the name of the game in the future. But television is changing. There was just a, uh, the annual report done by the Pew Research Center and the Center for the Excellence in Journalism. They just came out with their annual report a few weeks ago, a few days ago. And it uh, showed that uh, every sector in the media has, uh, has, has had a poor year yet again, uh, except radio, I think, is holding its own, and online has, has shot up. Television, broadcast television is losing, not as much as we were, but is losing audience. Cable news, which was the bright, shining star for a long time, is now losing audience, and a lot of it is going online. I don't know if we can reflect this on television, and I hope we can. How many people here read a daily newspaper most days, the print? Raise your hand. Now, of the students, of the students, how many people read a daily newspaper? Okay, that tells you the we difference. I mean, I mean, seriously. No, no, but seriously, in the front row, what happens is, say, I, I teach a course at Penn, none of my students, maybe two, read a, read a daily, they read it online. I, I suspect you're far better informed than I was. I know you're far better informed than I was when I was sitting in your seat. Uh, but they just don't read newspapers. Judy, there's been a lot of talk recently about public funding for national public radio. 
Could you give us your thoughts about that? And even some talk about public funding for <laughs> public television, too. Um, it's, uh, it's been a, a rocky period, I would say. Uh, there was some, uh, uh, I would say, negative attention brought on, on NPR, on National Public Radio, after a couple things happened. They f uh, fired the commentator, Juan Williams, after some comments he made on Fox News. Uh, uh, and then they had an unfortunate incident a few weeks ago, or a month or so ago, I guess, where one of their, uh, uh, the people involved in fundraising for NPR went to lunch uh, with people who purported to be uh, involved in an Arabic, U.S. Arabic uh, uh, Muslim uh, uh, foundation. And he ended up saying, again, some unfortunate things uh, that reflected his political views, which I think pretty much everybody agrees uh, are not something to be shared, especially by somebody who's not, uh, you know, who's working for a news organization. But, um, and I think that brought attention on public broadcasting at a time when there was already a move, especially uh, by some uh, 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 political conservatives who were really interested in cutting funding. And frankly, uh, people across the political spectrum have, have looked at whether it makes sense to continue funding public broadcasting. The argument we make is that without getting into, into, the, into the debate, in, uh, the congressional debate, because that's not what we do, is that, and I, and I believe this with all my heart, that I think we continue to fill an important place in the national dialogue. I think we, at the news hour, by covering the news the way we do, uh, in a way that really isn't available night after night after night uh, in this country, that we, we bring something to the table. I think NPR brings something to the table. You look at their audience growth, in fact, over the last couple of years, and it's just been nothing short of remarkable. People, and I think that may reflect what's happened in commercial radio, else where people can't find news uh, in many other parts of radio, and so they've turned increasingly to public radio. And I will say that the audience for the news hour has held steady. But it's a debate we should have. I mean, I think we welcome the chance to, frankly, to talk about what we do and to explain why we do what we do. Uh, at the same time, I don't think it's appropriate for us to get into the, into the nitty gritty arguments uh, in the Congress because, you know, that's just not wh who we are. You can see the entire discussion on Voices of Our Time with Al Hunt and Judy Woodruff tonight at 10. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.